You're watching Stat News Global. I'm Amita Abrevi and really glad to have from Yerevan, Anna Nagdalian. She's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson there. Ms. Nagdalian, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I know you've had sleepless nights because you we've been trying to contact you. You've been awake all through the night, awake early in the morning. Thank you for finding such time uh, in a difficult situation. Thank you for having me and thank you for the patience and uh, I'm deeply sorry for all the changes I have to do in our schedule. Not at all. I can totally understand. Uh, what is the situation now? We've seen three days of uh, uh, attacks on, on both sides or uh, defensive uh, postures from Armenia as well. Overnight uh, artillery attacks. What's the latest that you can tell us about? Yeah, you know, it's already the third day of uh, Azerbaijan's aggression against Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, which we Armenians call Arta. And uh, the, during the night, the fightings continue and the defense forces of Nagorno-Karabakh have repelled successfully all the attempts of the Azerbaijani side to uh, all the attacks of the Azerbaijani armed forces. They're, the fightings are still ongoing and uh, the uh, situation is intense, but we are resolved that we, will, we both we, Armenia and Arsaf, will be able to repel all this aggression and uh, that Azerbaijan's aggression will definitely fail. But uh, there is a new development which I was uh, contacted uh, about like five minutes ago. It's a uh, information spread, uh, this information spread by the Minister of Defense of Azerbaijan that Armenia actually starts shelling from the territory of the Republic of Armenia from Vakanis region, the Dashkesan Dash region of Azerbaijan. And I, as a representative of foreign ministry and as a representative of the Armenian side, say that we totally reject this disinformation. It's a disinformation spread, unfortunately, on the official level of Azerbaijan. And we know that what's behind this uh, spread of this disinformation, it is aimed at preparing grounds for launching aggression this time again against the territory of the Republic of Armenia. And the, we condemn this kind of a policy, strictly condemn this kind of policy of Azerbaijan side. We want to say that all the steps they are undertaking to undermine the stability and peace in the region will are condemnable not only by us, but also by the international community. And the Azerbaijani political and military leadership will bear full responsibility for all their actions. Ms. Nagdalian, just uh, for people who are outside the region to understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. you're saying that uh, Armenia's defensive actions have been taking place in uh, the Nagorno-Karabakh area. Uh, there has been no uh, any kind of uh, army attacks from the Republic of Armenia side, right? And here you have the Azerbaijanis, you're saying, who are accusing you of shelling from the Republic of Armenia territory. Yes in preparation yes. for them to attack uh, to attack the Armenia. republic of correct? armenia yes yeah that's correct so you know unlike the july ba battles we have another case of escalation when azerbaijan attacked the republic of armenia in the northern part of the republic yeah. of armenia yeah. yes so, so unlike this one this time we are dealing with the aggression against nagorno karabakh which is the uh, more eastern part so, and uh, it's the aggression along the whole line of contact between Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan. And now with the spread of disinformation, they are trying to get relevant grounds to prepare grounds, uh, like to prepare information war campaign in order to launch an aggression against Armenia. It's uh, For us, it's the traditional their policy. It's always they are like doing that. They, uh, whenever they want to do something, their side will keep the other side. Uh, just going back in terms of the information that has come out uh, yeah. officially now, your counterpart Shushan Stepanyan, the press secretary for the yeah. Ministry, uh, Minister of Defense, the latest information we got from there was that uh, 49 Azerbaijani UAVs, four helicopters, 80 armed vehicles had been destroyed in uh, Armenia's uh, military position. Is that correct? Is that the latest? Uh, it's uh, when, Whenever we say Armenia, just one correction, whenever we say Armenia, as the battles are happening in Nagorno-Karabakh, it's a yeah. Nagorno-Karabakh Defense Army. We just, Armenians are used to say Armenia, yes. but it's Nagorno-Karabakh Defense Army. So yes, that's the latest. And uh, here we have, uh, you know, in this aggression of Azerbaijan, I will underline two main difficult points. Uh, you know, we had, uh, before this aggression, we had uh, um, uh, Azerbaijan publicly denouncing 
the peace process, at the level of the president of Azerbaijan, who said that they will resort to the military resolution of the conflict, which is the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, which is for us is the conflict which relates to the security and the right to live life of our compatriots living in Nagorno-Karabakh. And uh, they say at the highest level, at the level of the president, that they seek military solution to this conflict. And the second, in this operation of Azerbaijan against Nagorno-Karabakh, we have a huge military and political presence of Turkey. And the, the part of the military uh, equipment military you have indicated, the part of it are used by Turkish military experts and the part of it are producing our Turkish meat. And uh, this time we are dealing also with the, let's say, uh, alliance of uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey against Nagorno-Karabakh, against the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. Just th those points that you are bringing up, uh, Ms. Nagdalian, uh, can you, uh, do you have proof to say that uh, Turkey is sending arms because there are reports also of the joint exercise that Azerbaijan and Turkey had conducted recently that some arms may have been left behind. Uh, also reports, uh, and your prime minister has been quoted there uh, as saying that uh, Turkey is uh, sending uh, uh, people from Syria to, to fight uh, in, in the Nagorno-Karabakh area. Do you have any proof of that? Yes, uh, let me say that uh, just from the beginning of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict uh, back in the 90s, Turkey yeah. has always been supporting Azerbaijan. Yes. And, within the, and uh, if uh, previously that uh, support was uh, demonstrated or manifested by the uh, land blockade of the Republic of Armenia, this time we have qualitative change in that. Uh, support and this time we have uh, we have information about Turkish military experts fighting side by side with Azerbaijan. They are using Turkish made weapons, including the UAVs, which is drones and the uh, warplanes. Uh, there was a lot of you were right there after the July ba battles. There was a large scale military exercise, Turkish Azerbaijan military exercise, with uh, really provocative actions. In the vicinity of Nagorno-Karabakh, they were and uh, also Armenia, they were really provocative action. And uh, also, uh, we have the credible reports that Turkey is recruiting in some parts of the Middle East, precisely Syria, which is their presence is strong, some foreign terrorist fighters, and already transferring them to Azerbaijan. We have credible reports on that on many sources, including the Turkish ones. And uh, Turkey is also providing a huge political and propaganda support to Azerbaijan during this aggression. And as I said, it uh, comes to the point that we can say that people of Nagorno-Karabakh are left in fighting against Turkish-Azerbaijani alliance. And for us, it's really uh, disturbing or concerning because, you know, the history of the Armenian nation about Turkish involvement in the region is really sad one. It's a tragic one. It's a, it's a kind of uh, their role in doing, uh, in committing the Armenian genocide or annihilating the uh, Armenian population, they're restoring homeland. And it seems that today they are encouraging or providing all the support to Azerbaijan to do the same in the South Caucasus. And uh, the genocide of the alliance of, between Turkey and Azerbaijan is serious threat to the peoples of the, to all the peoples of the region. But yeah. here I would say, yeah, I will, want to underline that we have all this information, but we, I am underlining with the full determination resolve that Armenia and Artsakh are strong and determined to repel with their full capacities and neutralize uh, the intent of that alliance, the intent of that alliance against the Armenian people. We are strong in our resolve to protect ourselves, to protect the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, security of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, security of Armenia, because in our case, that resolve has no alternative because it embodies the unshattered will of the Armenian people to live in their land. And uh, we are confident, I can say with uh, full confidence, that this aggression, this aggression attempt of Azerbaijan will fail. And uh, at the end, uh, Azerbaijan will be compelled to solve the issue, to compel to deny all their, renounce their intention to solve this issue from military means and will sit at the negotiation table with the uh, Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh side. I'll just get to uh, the diplomatic maneuvers, but when you're talking about information and disinformation and it's so difficult for a third party outside to get uh, unbiased opinions or mm -hmm. views or news, 
the Turks are uh, or the Azerbaijanis are accusing Armenia of getting Kurdish or PKK fighters as well from uh, Syria. That's what I said, that uh, we fully deny that information. That information was denied uh, uh, was uh, by also the Artsakh officials. And uh, as I was saying at the beginning, whenever they are trying, as well as trying to do something, they have the policy of accusing the other side in the same actions. So we, you can see at that accusation in the same policy, whenever they are trying to attack, they accuse us on uh, preparing something on that direction. So it's we totally deny that information. It's a, it's a fake news saying in a modest way, what is it? Right, your point taken. Ms. Nagdalian, I just want to talk about uh, India and uh, Armenia and India and the region as well. Now, we've seen uh, Armenia last time around this year, your prime minister and our prime minister met at the United Nations General Assembly, of course, now is the pandemic. And many say that's probably one of the reasons for if Azerbaijan started uh, this conflict, that's one of the reasons that the world is distracted. What would you be looking for in terms uh, of uh, at least verbal support from uh, New Delhi? There's been no statement as yet, especially because uh, your prime minister has gone publicly on record to say that you support India's position, say, on Kashmir, unlike, the, uh, unlike Turkey, Azerbaijan or Pakistan. So one more point about the uh, COVID-19, you know, yes, there has there was a call of the UN Secretary General on a ceasefire, yeah. global ceasefire, yes. and the Armenian Darts were among the first to join that. And, you know, so far we don't have our other side joining that the ceasefire call. And uh, concerning if uh, think, uh, you say that it is uh, difficult to get unbiased information who started the issues or something, I will... Uh, under my one point, for years, Armenia, Artsakh, and the mediators, OEC means group co-chairs, have been suggesting and insisting on the establishment of ceasefire violation investigation mechanism. Mm -hmm. And we so far have a consistent re rejection of Azerbaijan to establish that mechanism. And if they don't want to instigate this, like, if they are not the ones saying, yeah initiating aggression, then we don't understand why so far they are completely denying and rejecting the establishment of the mechanism. And even they recently, on September 25, they rejected the resumption of the monitoring mission of the OAC, of personal representative of the OAC chairman in office, which it was a monitoring mission along the line of contact saying what are the developments. And they, on September 21st, they rejected the resumption of the monitoring mission, while the other sides, Armenian and Tatsav, accepted that. And about the international community, you know, Armenia and India have really strong relationship. We call each other brotherly nations. We share each other's concern, each other's issues. We are really sensitive to the issues of concern of each other. And... Uh, India is an uh, important member of the international community, and uh, we always appreciate its uh, India's support and position on the issues that which are sensitive to us. And in this case, the major role of the international community is, uh, and it has been done vocally by all the members of the international community, that they refuse, the, they condemn the use of force against the attack, and we know who initiated the use of force. We have that joint position of the international community, and we suppose that it is one of the reasons why Azerbaijan started this blaming game, blaming us in everything. And, uh, uh, but we also expect from the international community to be more assertive in their assessment on, uh, on the, who started the aggression and uh, on condemning the launch of large-scale aggression of Azerbaijan against the Artsakh and against the people of Artsakh. And uh, against the security of the people of Russia. So, so would uh, say Armenia be happy if uh, India issues another statement like it did uh, during uh, the July uh, conflict, in which I think at least 17 people were killed? In that, India called for both sides to restrain themselves or to not uh, break the ceasefire. Is that enough, or would you want New Delhi to be more vocal on its support? Because India has ties, including trade and business and oil and natural gas, with Azerbaijan as well. You know, we want uh, the whole international community to be more vocal in condemning aggression. But uh, we also appreciate the position of the international community, the joint and the uh, unequivocal position of the international community that any aggression, any use of force should be renounced and is condemned. 
because we are, are never the one using the force. We are never the one initiating the aggression. Um, Ms. Nagzali, I just wanted to ask you what you can uh, tell us about. Uh, there were reports that uh, India had won a military contract earlier this year for weapon locating radar as well to Armenia, a $40 million contract. Is there anything that you can share with us uh, on that? Uh, actually, in my capacity, I am always uh, not answering any questions about the military, but I can provide you the contacts of my colleagues at the Ministry sure. of Defense because that's their sphere and I'm not trying to intervene anyway sure. in that. Okay. Understood. Uh, Russia now, extremely important. You're an ally partner of, of uh, with uh, Russia. There's a military base near Yerevan as well with nearly 5,000 troops. How is Russia dealing with the situation? Um, both Sergei Lavrov and I, I think President Putin have also spoken to leaders on both sides. Uh, is the Russia in a position to try and calm down temperatures and bring uh, ceasefire? You, you know, you are right. Russia and Armenia are allies and our relationship with them is uh, constructed within the logic of allied relationship. But uh, at the same time, at the same time, Russia is the uh, co-chair of the OSCE Minsk Group uh, co-chairmanship is one of the co-chairs and that co-chairmanship is the only international format which has an international mandate to mediate in the resolvement of this conflict and they have also one more important function to be is the restraining any aggression like uh, pro preventing any aggression any aggressive steps and in this case we are indeed in a uh, constant contact with the Russian side, with the minister is in con contact, co contact with its uh, colleagues, but uh, we are also in constant contact with two other co-chairs and uh, with all that system is working in order to uh, to take steps on the de-escalation. And uh, we are in contact, we, minister had the phone calls, you, you are right, with uh, Sergei Lavrov, the prime minister talked, but also the Prime Minister talked to the President Macron and the Prime Minister and Minister also talked to Under Secretary of the United States. So all the system of the co-chairmanship is in contact. The minister is uh, keeping contact with the co-chairs themselves and, and uh, they are provided with uh, all the information on the ground, operative information on the ground and developments and all this system of co-chairmanship is uh, really useful in trying to take steps to de-escalate the situation. And of course, the Russian's role is, uh, the role of Russia is also specifically emphasized in that process. Just wanted you to tell us what uh, information you can give us about, say, civilian casualties or destruction in those areas. Uh, you know, at the first day of the aggression, Azerbaijan uh, was using a lot of uh, drones, um, you have this, and uh, it was, uh, uh, Azerbaijan was deliberately targeting civilian population, civilian infrastructure, it is whose schools, uh, living settlements, and then uh, uh, up uh, yesterday we had the report of the two civilian killed. Mother, uh, child was killed, child. Nine, uh, nine year, yeah, nine-year-old child was killed, and mother was. There are a lot of wounded. There are a number of wounded people among the civilians. You know, uh, even in the capital of Stepanakia, all the civilians are in shelters in order to be safe. Uh, but the, in this case, we want also to condemn the deliberate targeting of the civilian infrastructure. It is schools, kindergartens, that's why uh, they are also wounded uh, among the civilians. Uh, even uh, among, uh, there were reports about wounded in the civilians and the ca casualties are all, um, up until now, I have the number of uh, three people. But uh, today in the morning, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to check the numbers. Anna Nagdalian, I absolutely appreciate your time in uh, extremely di difficult circumstances. We'll keep in touch. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We keep watching Stat News Global for the latest news and analysis from an Indian perspective. Do follow us on our social media handles to get the latest and do support our kind of journalism. You're watching Stat News Global. I'm Amitabh Brady.